everyone. Welcome and thank you for tuning in. This is First Global's second STEM talk and interview session for the 2023 First Global Challenge season. My name is Manisha and I'll be moderating today's talk. Joining us today are two amazing individuals who work to develop the Experiential Robotics Platform Kit, also known as the XRP Kit. This aims to help expand global participation in robotics. So first up, we've got Brad Miller, Senior Fellow at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and one of the creators of the XRP platform. Brad has taught robotics and worked with FIRST for over 20 years, and he's traveled across the country and the world teaching robotics to thousands of students and teachers. Brad is also the software engineer who helped create WPI Lib, which is an open source software library that powers the FIRST robotics competition. Welcome, Brad. Oh, hi, thank you. Oh, also, okay. okay, go ahead. Oh, okay, I just, I, uh... I, I guess I, I'd like to say I just like to say that I'm really happy to be here and to and to share the evolution of the XRP robot with everybody, uh, and you know and have and 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 you know excited to have been part of its development, and uh, and and I just want to emphasize while we're talking that this is even though I'm talking about it like as if I'm the one who did everything I'm not and there's a really big team of really talented people who who are who are just like me but. Not, I'm not not on the webcast right now. So um um so so I just wanted to just wanted to point that out. It is definitely a teamwork makes the dream work type of effort. So but thank you for all of your efforts that you put into it. Also joining us today is Rob Reynolds, who is a creative technologist at SparkFun, where he maintains a working and constantly expanding knowledge base of technologies. He is tasked with presenting explaining and demonstrating Spark Fund's, Spark Fund's new products on a weekly basis. Before Spark Fund, he also worked in set and prop design, fabrication in the arts from regional theaters across the country to Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week in New York. Welcome, Rob. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to have joined the XRP team. Um, I came to it a little later. There are so many big giant brains that put this together. Um, they brought me in towards the end to kind of start poking at it and playing with it and seeing what can be done and what we can do and how we can expand it. And I'm super excited to be part of this amazing team. I learn stuff every day from these people. I'm so glad to have both of you with us because I can already tell that both of your different backgrounds, it's the perfect culmination of steam in a product platform. And I'm so excited to talk more about it. Cool. Um, Rob, so spark fun. What is that? What is? Tell me about your background. Tell me about SparkFun. Tell me about you. Okay. Well, I'll start with SparkFun. SparkFun is a an electronics company that was founded 20 years ago by Nathan Seidel in his college room. Um, he needed some parts for his uh, senior project. The only place he could get them was to order them from somewhere in Eastern Europe. I don't even remember where now. Hungary, maybe? Anyway, and he had to like photocopy his credit card and then fax it to this company and there was a minimum order and he said you know this is ridiculous can i resell these and they said we don't care what you do with them so that was the beginning of spark fun and it's grown to now we we serve we, we say everyone from from k through nasa we have kids that we give to kindergarten students we have uh, actually nasa is one of our biggest buyers we've got parts on mars right now if you can believe that so we are not just global, we've gone beyond global. We are an interplanetary company. That's amazing. And I don't think many companies or people out there can say that kind of thing. So definitely yeah. very impressive. What yeah. got you into this field? Tell me. Oh man, I did not come to this in the usual path. My path, if you were to trace my path to where I am today, it would look like the MC Escher painting. Uh, you know, the <laughs> one with all the stairs, relativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I started my life in the arts. I've worked, I worked for decades as an actor and a musician, but I always had a, a penchant to draw for the mechanical. Uh, when I was in school, going through school, I was studying uh, the arts and mechanical engineering and architecture. And then at one point I had to make a choice and I was already earning money as a musician. So I followed the arts path, but always kept my hand in, in the tech half. And, you know, as an actor, you're not working all the time. A lot of actors wait tables. I chose to work in set design and theater design because that way I didn't have to wait tables, but it kept my hand in building and creating. And so once I wound up in Colorado, I learned about SparkFun, went to some of their events, their autonomous vehicle, vehicle competitions, 
back in the early days when nobody could create an autonomous vehicle. Now you've got elementary school kids that are doing these things. It's so cool. It's so great to see this evolution. But the people at Sparkfun kind of seemed like my people, you know, my tribe. And I thought if I ever settle down, I think this is where I'll wind up. And then I started a family and it was time to settle down. So here I am. Amazing. And I think that's just such a beautiful like story. Like you had multiple interests and you pursued all of them in different ways. It sounds like a very fulfilling life, if I may say so. It really, it really has been. It's really cool. You know, I continue to get to do what I love. And I, in the position I'm in, they're so good as far as creativity and freedom that really I have no adult supervision. <laughs> That's the dream. That's yep. the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, you come from a little different pathway. Do you mind telling us about it? Yeah, I mean, I kind of I, I switched careers also, but not quite the, the extreme that uh, that Rob did. It was, um, you know, I used to do uh, uh, I was always doing software for a living. And, and and so I was writing software development tools for um, software developers, of all people. So people who create software to be used commercially need tools to make their software. And so I worked on those tools and um and I did like compilers, you know, the programs that translate like your, you know, C++ programs, C and C++ programs to, or Java programs to the machine language, you know, that kind of stuff and all sorts of tools. And I and that's what I was doing. But then um, one day, uh, a friend of mine who was at WPI, it's Worcester Polytechnic Institute, the, the university that I'm with right now, said that I should go to Epcot Center because there was something really cool there and it had robots. And that was like back in 2000. And, and it turned out it was the first championship. And there were 20,000 people there. And there were all these like high school students who were making robots. And I'd never seen robots before. I mean, this is, was a long time ago. And, you know, except on TV. I saw TV robots. But, um, uh, and, and I was so excited by it. And then I, and I made the mistake of going up to the mentor for the team for WPI. And, and, I, and I went up to him and I said, uh, uh, Ken, I know something about software. Can I help? And that was like the biggest mistake in my life because <laughs> I have not escaped since. And, and, um, and it ended up, you know, resulting in a total career change. And, um, and, and, and now I write software and, and, uh, you know, help with, with various robot competitions, like the first robotics competition and, 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 and now first global. I'm only laughing because been there. I feel like all of us have had that experience <laughs> of like, oh, there's this robot thing happening. I wonder what that's about. Um, and I also laugh just because like I grew up in first robotics competition and I've met you through that. And just to see now, like I now I've heard like how you got into it. I'm like, oh, okay. Everyone had the same experience. That's amazing. <laughs> um, okay. So working at WPI. What does a normal day look like for you? Do you have a, a normal day that's like, or is every day different? Well, it's funny you ask. Uh, so so what I do, right, so I, I retired, actually. Uh, I retired from, you know, I kind of got older and decided I should start living, you know, living my dream life, you know, going on vacations and doing, you know, doing things like that and fishing or, you know, riding my bicycle and, and that kind of stuff. And that was about a year ago. And um, and I failed. I, I failed hugely at retiring. And and so um, uh, so what I do, what I basically been doing for like the last year and a half has been working on this project. And um, and and I kind of volunteer, you know, I go into school and and um, and we've been developing software. We've been iterating through prototypes of the of the robot itself. Uh, we've been working on curriculum. We've kind of been putting all the stuff together. Um, so, so my day is coming in and working on software, working on curriculum, you know, doing testing, um, and and meeting with all the rest of the, the 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 amazing set of partners that we have on this project. And and I don't and I think I'm not going to be able to get out of this either. I don't see why you would want to. I mean, it sounds amazing. <laughs> Rob, what about you? I feel like you're on the other side of this here. I I kind of am. Uh, there is I don't have a normal work day really. I mean, I guess I kind of do. If you look at the overarching, what my work day or my work week is, um, every week we will put out a new product. Ideally, you know, an original product. 
And my job is to take that product, get it in my hands, learn about it, learn the technology, learn what language you know, it's coded in, write a script, create a script, shoot a video, and if there's time and my brain is working, create some kind of ridiculous demo for it. I mean, it doesn't have to be ridiculous, but I lean towards the ridiculous. I feel like that's more fun. It kind of shows whoever is watching the video to think outside the box. Literally. Right, and that's, that. yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of my aim. I mean, there are times when I'm like, okay, this is a pretty specific focused thing and people are gonna wanna know how to use it and what they would do with it. But a lot of times it's just, I just wanna make it fun. I wanna put eyes on it. And, you know, once the people are there, they, they'll see it and then they'll see the specs and the, you know, the tech specs and be like, Oh, you know what? I bet I could also do this. I could also do that with it. I love it. So it's it's fast paced. A lot of times I'll get a board on Monday or Tuesday and have to have a video and a demo for it by Thursday. But, you know, sometimes I get a little bit longer and that's always nice. Is that similar to the kind of, you know, your previous career being in acting, being in production? Is that a similar timeline, would you feel? Or do you like Tell me, tell me about like the transition from that to now what you do. Is it similar? Okay. Is it different? Parts of it are. Um, in theater, you usually, depending on the theater and what you're doing, what I was doing, um, I could have, you know, two months to build three large projects for the stage. Um, being in a show, it's a little quicker. You usually have 10 days, maybe two weeks to put up a show that's going to run for four months. So that's a lot of cramming, kind of similar to this. I think Fashion Week was the most similar to this fast paced in your face, hurry up and get it done kind of thing because Fashion Week's great. It's all these designers from around the world coming together for one week to show their best for the season. And these people are putting, you know, we're talking about seven, $800,000 shows for a 20 minute show. And the way those creative minds work, if they're, it's about the clothing. So you want the background to not draw from the clothing and they may change their mind the night before so you've got you know eight hours to recreate something that's going to be the set for their show and like i said with an eight hundred thousand dollar budget they want it right and with that money they can get it right it's just fast that's crazy but i guess in a way like throughout all of that there have been certain skills that you've been able to translate across the different modalities you know mm -hmm, i definitely. feel like communicating with a team, right? You have like your theater team, not just right. the set production, but you have like, I'm pre I'm presuming a lot here, but like the directors, the actors, you know, the theater themselves, they might be a different, would that considered like a different entity or is it all right. one there would huge be, big family? Well, there's usually the producers and the director and the, you know, the set designer and the lighting designer and the, you know, sound designer, depending on what you're building. Yeah, but the actors too. There was a, I did a build for a show, a production called Ragtime, where I had to build a three quarter scale working 1923 Model T Ford. And it was a wow. great build, and I was super proud of that one. But the, the lead actor, the one who had to drive the car, was from New York City, had never driven anything in his life. You know, we took the subway oh, all the no. time for the bus. So on the gas and the brake, I had to put like those little, like the little arrow and the square, like you would put on like, you know, your CD player or something. I was like, the little arrow means go, the little square means stop. Wow. That's amazing. It was really cool. That sounds awesome. And it just, I love the inherent creativity that's through every step of your life that we're learning about. It's <laughs> so impressive. You're Thank just you. constantly innovating, but in a different way. I feel like when you hear innovation, it's always about the latest and greatest tech upgrade. But like, it sounds like that can just be in any part of your life. You had Absolutely. to create a solution for this actor who had never driven a car before. Like, that is amazing. Right, right. Well, and I, like, like I said, I started my life as a musician. And as a jazz musician, it's about creating. You know, here's the framework of the song. Now create a solo. You're just, you're improvising. You're making it up on the fly. And I think that kind of set my brain, my young brain, in that direction. Amazing. Brad, your career path. Where'd you start? Obviously, we know it ends with robots, but what led you there? What inspired you to get into software? Well, I got into software. I don't know. I really got hooked on software a long, you know, like back when I was, it was really weird. When I was in high school and and, and computers were just starting to come around. I mean, you know, it's, um, uh, I, 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 I 
was kind of, I, I, so there's this junior college that was near my house and I was in high school and some friend of mine brought me there because his brother went to the junior college and we played with this time-sharing computer system that they had there. And I kind of kept sneaking in over and over again, you know, and just playing with the computer. And I was like going there after school every day. And um, it was really weird. And, um, and, 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 but I got really, really excited about it. And, and at school, we, we, we had like one computer programming class um, and it was a language called Fortran, which uh, is not used quite the same as it was back then. And, uh, and I learned that. And, uh, but then, then I just kept going. I really liked it. And then, then I ended up getting a job um, uh, working on a Fortran compiler, you know, the program that translates the Fortran program into machine language program. And, um, and then, and that then got another job and another job. And I kept like switching jobs really fast until I got to this, this really, really what ended up being a huge company in, in Massachusetts here called Digital Equipment Corporation that, um, and, and I worked for them for 18 years uh, working on software. And, and then I just kind of kept going, but, but, it, but everything changed that day I went to Florida and, and saw the, you know, the, the first robotics competition. I mean, it literally, I just made this right angle turn and didn't know anything about robots or anything about any of this other stuff, but it was pretty good because all the software that people were using was way back in the, in, in the, in, in their infancy, infancy. And, uh, and, and so there's a lot of opportunity for making improvements and stuff. And so I really kind of latched onto that and had a lot of fun with it. And, uh, and, and and worked with a lot of really smart people. So so that was that was good. So now you work, do you still work with WPI Lib or is XRP like full fully your commit now? So I, a little bit with WPI Lib. Um uh and in fact we're actually making WPI Lib work with the XRP. Amazing. So, yeah. So so the idea is that we're gonna um make it so that the teams who um who have XRPs can use them to bring newer team members up to speed because they can use all the same software tools and all the same languages and everything else that they would use for programming their, you know, their, their, their 140 you know, pound robots, uh, you know, that are driving around and they can just, they can, but they can do it with the XRP, which is pretty exciting. And, um, um, and, and so that's starting to work right now. And there's a whole bunch of uh, first teams that have been buying the robot kits specifically for that. That's awesome. So it's, not only a tool to just teach people about robots at like a foundational level, but it's also now a training tool for other robotics applications is what I'm hearing. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and it's also, a we can talk more about this later, but it's also a really great tool for, for it just in general, you know, I mean, um, uh, you know, kind of my philosophy is that, um, uh, that everything is more fun when you do it with robots. And, um, and, and so, it's, it's just really a good way to uh, uh, get students engaged in STEM education. You know, if you can if you can have the project like driving around on the floor, it just makes it that much more exciting. And um, and, and and so so I, I really believe that. I think there's something to be said for when you're in class and you're learning all the theory, all of the, you know, the math behind physics or just the math itself. And that's these are a lot of abstract concepts. and some people are more attuned to be able to pick those up really quickly and see the things in their head, right? I think having something like the XRC, XRP kit is great because then you see those in action. Like I'm a very visual learner and math was hard for me when I was growing up because I couldn't see it as well as other people were seeing it. But when you add a robot to it, it's like, oh, I see how everything's coming together now. And I think that's so powerful that like, you know, there was first robotics competition and that did it a certain way. And now XRP is here to lower the barrier for a lot more people to be able to learn these concepts, to be able to master them even. And I love that, especially the translation through WPI Lib to then connect it to other first programs. So like as your, you know, your school, your community, your family, even as people start with the first step and then begin to you know, get some progress and want to expand their knowledge. There's a next step for them to be able to take. And I like that a lot. I think yeah, that's super I, you important. know, I find I find in teaching that very often, you know, you try and teach students stuff like math concepts, you know, trigonometry, like, you know, stuff that you were talking about. 
you know, where, where the teacher makes you a promise. They say, learn this stuff right now because you'll need it in five years. Okay. And maybe you will and maybe you won't, but you know, and it's kind of not after a while you don't believe it anymore. But if the teacher, if the teacher says, make the robot turn, you know, 85 degrees and then drive some distance, then you need it right away. And there's a reason to learn it. And um, and 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 instead of the teacher having to force you to learn stuff that you may never use again, you're asking the teacher how to do it because you need it at the moment in that moment. And so it kind of turns around the whole process of uh, education. And and I you know I think you're right um, that it that it really has that kind of effect on people. Speaking of the effect that we have on people, the teams that are all super excited about the XRP kit, they've had some questions for you. Shall we get into them? Sure. Sure. Awesome. This first question is from Team Syrian Ab Arab Republic. And this one's for Rob. As a creative technologist at Sparkphone Electronics, can you explain how you bridge the gap between technology and creativity in your role? That's yes. a good one. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. And I don't know that it's something I think about. I think maybe because I came from a creative background first, I think being able to add technology to it is kind of easy like i don't know i mean there are certainly sometimes when we'll get a new product out and i'll have to demonstrate it and i'll be like okay here's the technology what can i add to it creatively mm. um i think a big part of my creativity actually also comes from working in theater uh in technical theater because a lot of theaters don't have a lot of money so a lot of times your solution to their need has to be creative. You know, you know, if you're building a set or a prop for a Broadway show, you can just throw money at it. That's the easy solution. Most of the time though, that's not the case. Certainly not in theater, certainly not in my life, certainly not, you know, in most of the world. So creativity becomes your currency. You know, if I, you know, th there's a saying in, well, in pretty much everything I've done in my life, uh, fast, good, cheap, pick two. That's fair. So, yep. That's fair. So, There's always a trade-off with yep. everything and, that we do, for sure. Right. And there was usually a deadline in theater, so it had to be fast. There was usually budget constraints, so it had to be cheap, but they wanted it good. So you take away the, you know, cheap, you can add money or, you know, but so it was like that. I think that creativity, having to do something, not having a big budget, that that inspires creativity. And again, I think I think I lean. I look for what's what's going to be funny, what's going to be appealing, what people are going to enjoy watching, or what's current that I can reference. Um, what what's unexpected, mm. you know? If I'm, I had a we had a, a new temperature sensor out. I don't know, maybe a year ago, and it's great. It's a temperature sensor. You plug it in, it tells you the temperature. Great. Um, showing the screen capture of a serial monitor, showing you the temperature. Not very exciting. So. Um, I took a bunch of pictures of myself from old um, theater fashion days in different outfits from like shorts or a bathing suit all the way to a full winter coat and put them on a wheel on a servo. And depending on what the temperature was, the wheel would turn and display it. I actually might have that sitting right here. Oh, I, I would love I to see it. <laughs> I, yeah. Whoop. Doesn't have a microcontroller because I clearly tore it out to build something else. <laughs> but it's this. It's got it's got a little LCD display here, so it would tell you what the temperature is and how I should dress. So you know, if it was nice out here, well, here's an outfit. Or if it's nice out, let's see what's next. Oop, if it's a little cooler, I've got a light jacket. Let's see if it's really cold. I've got a, you know, more of a jacket. And if it's super cold, uh oh, my servo's catching. I've got a big parka. You know, so and so and you know, I demonstrated that with a heat gun. I just pointed the heat gun at it to make the temperature go up, and each temperature range eight degrees 10 degrees it would move to a different outfit and it's just ways like that you know that's just kind of thinking of strange or interesting or ridiculous ways to demonstrate a product i'm obsessed with that that's amazing <laughs> well because i think i think that's so creative and so fun like the whole point of like you know different things that we're seeing in the world right now for like social media for example when you see like a trending video it's because mm -hmm. it's creative. That idea that somebody had or that idea or that music, it's because somebody did something and everybody liked it. Everybody connect with it in some way, shape or form. And I love that you're bridging like the temperature sensors, a relatively basic item, right? right? It's in a lot of different things. We have it in like something as simple as like your oven, you know, 
Yeah. You want to set it to certain degrees to make bread versus like bake something else or like cook something else or like in your car, for example, right? They're all doing different things. And I love that you have a dial that tells you what to wear because I know everybody in the world has indecision when it's like, especially if you live in a climate like New England where it's like, oh, it's warm today, but it's really humid. So it's going to feel like it's a lot hotter. I don't know what to wear right, right now. And you've got a dial that tells you exactly what to wear. Amazing. Right. I love it. <laughs> I love that you add excitement to very, what could be perceived as like, oh, that's so simple. That's just such a basic, like it does this thing, but you're taking it and expanding it tenfold. I love it. Right. And I think too, anytime you can add lights or movement to something, it instantly becomes more creative or creates the illusion of becoming more creative. I mean, even googly eyes, you put googly eyes on a robot, everybody's going to love that robot. Oh yeah. I have seen so many robots with googly eyes and it's just it from like you know first global robots to first competition first robotics competition robots to battle bots mm -hmm. everybody's yeah. got googly eyes because it just makes everything better yeah if you anthropomorphize an object people are automatically more drawn to it I love that ah oh, that's so cool <laughs> this next question is from team Algeria and it's a question for Brad what was the most exciting or innovative project that you've ever worked on? Okay. All right. Well, yeah. okay. <laughs> have fun so, picking that so, one. <laughs> so, so for Brad 1.0, you know, it was all the software, these software development tools and everything I did, which is pretty exciting. But, but then, um, then, then WPI Live came around and um, it was, you know, first was in this transition from an old, you know, from an old controller control system to a new control system, they needed software, and 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 they saw some stuff I had worked on, and they asked me to kind of work on this what turned out to be WPI Live, the software libraries that all the FRC teams used, and that was really exciting. I mean, that was you know I'd walk up and down the the pits at the championship, you know, where there would be, I don't know how many teams were at the championship, like six hundred teams at the championship or something. They were like. 800 this 800 year? teams yeah and, and they'd all be it was you know how you know how cool it is when they're all using software that you worked on or got other people to work on or something that was like really inspiring you know it's like i'm sure you get the same thing rob you know you walk around and you see everybody using stuff you see all these red boxes around you know from spark fun products and and you see everybody using your stuff and it's that was that was like the most exciting thing that i'd done to to up to that date and then um I was in. I, I was fortunate to be able to go to Dubai for the uh, for for the uh, first global competition, and we were heading back. And I was sitting at the at the gate, um, getting ready to get on the airplane. And Dean Kamen was sitting there, um, you know, next to me. And and I was just I was just asking what it was like, you know, to you know to start this thing, you know, because it was like so huge and so so awesome and inspiring, and. Um, and, 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 and he, you know, he talked about it a little bit. And then I said, you just don't do small projects, do you? And, and then, you know, how people sometimes say something and you kind of remember it and it sticks with you. And he said, life is too short for small projects. And, um, and that was just kind of this advice that I remembered since then. And so now we're doing the XRP stuff. And I think this has the potential uh, or very likely potential to, to be much more impactful, you know, to reach many, many more people than the WPI Live software did. Um, and and I'm really, really looking forward to this. And so I think this is gonna this this will be the you know kind of the the penultimate, you know, the 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 really. If you asked me again in two years, um, I the answer would be hands down would be XRP. That's think, amazing, and that's such a good. I you know. I wanted to make fun of you a little bit because I was like, Brad, you didn't pick a project. That was three projects we just talked about. But <laughs> that's fair. But that's fair because every stage in your life that you just described, that was the most exciting, innovative project. And I think it's important that you're going to grow a lot throughout the course of your life, throughout the course of your career. Even like in a couple of years, you can grow tenfold. We've seen that in the last few years with everything going on in the world. I think it's important to be able to find that phase of your life and be like this was a highlight and i think it's it's i i'm also indecisive so it's hard for me to pick like one thing it's like what's your favorite cheese i don't know I, there's so many different types of cheeses that's not fair but like i think that's important because like at that stage in your life you're seeing 
the potential for more. You're so driven and you're so excited about what's to come. There's no like stopping point for you. And I think that's an important, like, at least it's a lesson for me of like, you know, this may be the most exciting thing in my life right now, but there's more to come because of what I've learned in this stage right now, in the here and now. And that's amazing. Good job, Brad. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Talking about the XRP kit a little bit, let, this next question is from Team Liberia. And they want to know, what is it? <laughs> what is it? And what inspired the development of it? Oh, can I, can I go? Absolutely. Yeah, please. Okay. This is, this is actually really interesting um, because at school, at WPI, um, back in what, 2020, I guess, where the uh, president of the university, everybody went home on break. And then the president of the university sent an, a, a, an email message to all the students and said, don't come back. There's a pandemic. And, and we're switching to, we're switching to remote learning. And, and I was teaching robotics engineering and, and, you know, you need robots for robotics engineering. And, and we had robots at school, but they were kind of expensive and, you know, and we shared them among students and they were in labs and stuff. So we had to come, we scrambled and had to come up with a solution in like a week or two. Um, and, and we found these, these robots that, that look like this. Um, this is from a, from a company called Lolu and, and it's, um, um, it's got a microprocessor on, it's got some wheels and some casters, you know, you can kind of see some of the inspiration for the XRP in this thing. And, and, um, and that's really what inspired its development, you know, that, that we needed to do something really fast and uh, get these out. Then subsequently, um, I, I got the WPI Live team to make these work for uh, FRC. So that, you know, because not only were, you know, not only were classes not meeting in person, but teams weren't meeting in person. And, and it gave an opportunity for uh, uh, first team members to continue learning about programming and playing with robot program using all of our tools, um, using this relatively inexpensive robot, you know, compared to where you might spend, you know, six or $7,000 on an FRC robot. And this thing is, you know, 150 or something like that. So, um, so, so that's kind of the inspiration from it. Um, and, and then, and then we, then, and then, when it came time to do the XRP, then that's another story uh, about, you know, how we made the jump from this to the XRP. I think that's so important because when all of us were at home, you know, and that's challenging. Remote school was hard. I think that's something that everybody agrees, right? Remote working was hard, remote life, trying to continue certain things. It was very difficult. I feel like having a robot in your hands just makes that a little better especially because of the hands-on part of it. You can't step into a machine shop to make this part that you just spent all this time designing. You can design in CAD, but you can't make anything unless you have the tools with you at home. And that's not very accessible for a lot of people, especially if like, I'm thinking about like, I live in an apartment, like I don't have a machine shop. I don't even have like a 3D printer. And that's not something that a lot of people can access. And I love that we're creating increased accessibility, especially during a time where that was very difficult for a lot of people. Um. This next question is from Team Philippines, and they want to know some of the key features and applications of the XRP kit. And did you have any issues during development? Rob, do you want to take that one first? Um, I mean, as far as key features and applications, it's it's incredibly accessible. It's accessible because it you can program it in two different languages. We've got the block language, and we've got uh, MicroPython. And the beauty about this about the environment is that you can just program it in block, all block, drag, drop, tell it what you want it to do. But then you can switch over and see how it would write that as a MicroPython program. And I think that's what such an important thing for, for learning, for advancement. You know, if it's if you're gonna learn a language, if you're gonna learn block, this blockly, drag it, drop it, and it does what you want, that's great. But at some point you're gonna need to take that next step. You're gonna need to learn a deeper language and I think that's one of the great things about this kit. Um, the expandability of it, the, I mean, there are so many cool things that this can do. There are cool things that it can do right out of the box. You slap it together in like, I don't know, I think four minutes was what the video we did took, four and a half minutes just to click everything. To, it just clicks together. It's so well designed uh, in that aspect. And then plug it in, get it connected. Uh, when you plug it in, the software environment checks to make sure you're, you've got the most recent update. 
if it if you don't, it plugs that in for you. I mean, it's just it's fast and it's easy and it's accessible. I love that. As a human factors engineer, that's very important to me. You know, is it intuitive and, and to use? Right. And it's expandable. Uh, the rail system around the edge. I have three D printers of things that just clip in instantly. You know, it it took me you know four minutes to design something that I could clip into this robot to expand it. And it sounds like there's no like here is the goal for you building this. You know, like with a Lego set, for example, like you have the specific thing that you're trying to build, but then depending on like you know how many Legos you have, you can expand it you can change it and i like that there's a similar mindset for the xrp kit there's right. not well, one given task for it well there's certainly a curriculum you know we want everybody to be on the sure. same page to yes. get started to take the same steps but when you get to the end of that you're not like and finished right With this you're like and what's next <laughs> you know the, have you have you thought about like building like uh i want to call them like expansion kits of like here is kit one that you can buy and it's like a certain challenge that you're going to solve. We've, we've talked about it. We still meet every week and talk about things like that. And we, you know, we're certainly talking about expansion kits. You know, what do we want it to do? Okay. What's interesting. What's, you know, we were recently talking about agriculture. There's a lot oh, of cool. tech and farming right now. It's like, okay, what could we do in agriculture? What could we expand? What kind of kit could we make? You know, things like that. We're certainly, certainly talking about it. Uh, one of the nice things too about the board is it has um, a quick connector, uh, QWIIC, which is a uh, a connector. Basically, it's a four-pin JST connector to allow you to do I squared C sensors, boards, expansion like that without having to solder anything. You wow. plug it in, plug it into a sensor. Of course, it's I squared C, so you can daisy chain them out to what 112, I think, 108, wow. something like that. So, yeah, it's so expandable that's yeah there so really neat. isn't an end to this and i i think that's important especially for like a product like this so we've talked about the hardware side a little bit talked about the awesome expansion packs brad is there anything coming from the software side that you yeah can there is about? actually um so one of the things we're doing at school right now is you know again following the theme of everything is more fun with robots we um for one of the you know i'm in i'm in the this robotics engineering department at wpi and so <laughs> One of the things that we that we want to be able to do is teach uh, programming to our first year students, first year college students, and so we're developing a, a Python programming course around the XRP. So it will be similar to the curriculum that we made available to everybody. You know, that's all free and open, so everybody gets it. But um, we're doing this other curriculum, which is more advanced. You know, it's more deep end uh, uh, programming skills, and then we'll make that available also. So that will be available alongside of the of the course that we have right now, and and so we'll be starting to teach that uh, in the middle of October. So um, you know, just after uh, First Global, we'll be teaching that course. So that will be that will be pretty exciting, and um, and then we'll have that. Awesome. So so yeah, there's a whole bunch of software opportunities. And there's also you know people can people can program the robots in besides Python and Blockly, they can use you know C plus plus and you know, do a bunch of other stuff with them. So, you know, as they, as they learn, learn more or want to do more with it, the options are there. I think that's cool too. Like a sweet little programming challenge is like you programmed it in block and Python, mini Python first. Can you translate to the other, the other languages and it still function the exact same? That's cool. I like that. Team Namibia wants to know what sets the XRP kit apart from other robotics kits. We've talked about it a little bit, I think, but if you both had to highlight your number one thing that makes this different, what would it be? Uh, I think I think the goal was, I mean, there were kind of a bunch of a bunch of goals, um, but you know, the whole idea was this to be a, a very we wanted to develop a very low cost, very accessible hardware platform that everybody could have. We wanted to, um, you know, there's so many things. There's so many things around in the world where you can buy robot kits, but they cost a thousand dollars or you know this or that. We the idea of the XRP was, you know, here it is. It should be it should be the size of a textbook and cost less. And Ooh, um, love that. And and um, and it should be so easy to build that anybody can do it. And and that's really um, that that's really where we went. I think that's what really sets it apart. And then along with that. We have um, uh, curriculum that's available now. We have lots of ideas about curriculum that's going to be coming on later. Um, so we see it being very extensible 
and and lots of opportunities for students and in, in schools to take it in different directions. So um, I think that's what sets it apart. I think it's it's it democ what we call democratizes STEM education. That is that you know it just makes it available to everybody, and and there's no no reason not to be able to use this in a classroom. I love it, Rob. What about I you? Want to I don't want it to seem like I'm copying off of Brad's paper, but that's pretty much exactly what I would say too. That's okay. You guys are on the same this, page. This price point comes in so much lower than so many other platforms. You know, it, we just want it in the hands of kids everywhere. We don't want we don't want that to be an obstacle. I think that's important, especially with the global reach that this product can have. Absolutely. We want it to be able to transcend country boundaries and i like that a lot oceans right. you might even yes, suggest yep. and we've we've been talking in our groups about expansions for it that can be done without a 3d printer without specific tools what can you make with cardboard or you know glue or clay or like you know we want everybody to be able to see this and and create with it and grow with it and just we just want to engage those young minds amazing final question from team columbia we've talked about it a little bit, but I think each of you have perspectives that may add to it. Um, they want to know how can the kit be tailored to cater to different skill levels? And I think, Rob, you just kind of touched on this. But like, I think the more important part of the question for me is about learning objectives. What do you want users of the kit to be able to take away at the end of the day? We have this curriculum what would you say are like key learning objectives for them? Oh, you know, it's kind of funny that you ask, you know, and sometimes, sometimes people don't understand the point of this, right? It's, and, and, and there was somebody, um, um, there was a professor from MIT who is, who is, uh, you know, very influential in the first robotics competition and in all robotics competitions named Woody Flowers. And he talked about how it wasn't about the robots. And 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 it kind of really isn't. I mean, it's you know these are really to to um, let students explore all these things that they need for careers in the future. You know, for pursuing STEM education careers like critical thinking and teamwork and open ended design and all sorts of stuff like that. So we're not trying to make robotics engineers out of high school students, right? Out of like you know ninth graders, tenth graders. We're trying to give them the the skills and the tools that they need to be able to go to be able to do more with their life and be able to solve hard problems and and to be able to go forward with it and and so that's really from my point of view if we get that that's the learning objective we're looking for now we do teach robotics engineering at WPI so if somebody wanted to learn about you know robotics engineering and they really liked it you're welcome to come and 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 uh, you know go to school with us. But that's not really the goal, and um, um, and and so I'm I'm really excited about that opportunity. Yeah, I th I think for this, um, I'm going to tap Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, at a commencement speech, talking to this, talking to the graduating students, and he said, "It's not so important that kids know what to think, but how to think." And I feel like this is going to help kids learn how to think. And the other thing I love about this, about catering to different skill levels, is that. This isn't a kit that you're ever done with. You know, you can buy a line following robot and put it together and it'll follow the line and then you are done with that robot. But with this, with the expandability with it, with the options, you know, thinking about what can be done next. Um, Drew, the engineer at Sparkbond, who's also working on this, and I have been putting our heads together. It's like, what can we do next? You know, he he hacked it to build a, a balancing bot that just rides on his on its two wheels. Um, you know, he added lights underneath. I'm adding some physical components, trying to, you know, adding some more mech engineering things to it. Just, it's so expandable, like every skill level, along with being able to code it in the block in block, being able to code it in MicroPython, being able to code it in WPI Live, all that. It's, like you said, every different skill level is gonna get something from this. I don't feel like this is a, this is a project that I'm ever going to feel like I'm done with. I love that. I'm a firm believer that we never stop learning. And I think this is a, like what you're saying is like, it's a vehicle for that. Whatever you want to think or you want to try to do with it next, you're going to learn something from it. And I think that's so important. Sorry, go ahead. Right. Well, and that's it. What's next? Well, you know, at the end of every day, at the end of every project, 
I can finish it and then be like, okay, what's next? What, you know, I want to make a siege engine. I want to drive up to the side of a, you know, a castle and hurl something over the top. Can I do that with this? I bet I can. No, that's sweet. Cause like, you know, we think about like the specific challenges and a lot of the times with some of these kits, it's just like that robot in isolation is doing something. Right. But I like the idea of like, if I were to build a castle, could I launch something over the side of it? Could I pretend that it is a amphibious boat vehicle mm-hmm. thing and have it try and transcend a very small, tiny river that I build? Absolutely. I love it. That's sweet. There are what seems to be limitless opportunities. And I think that's kind of yeah. the point of the XRP kit from what I've learned is that there is no limit to what you can learn with this vehicle. And that's the point. You want it to be a kind of jumping point also too. If something is very interesting about the kit to someone or the curriculum, you know, there's a module that they specifically resonated with. It'll inspire them to continue learning, trying to find out more about it. And there's so many resources that are being built around this kit too, like the integration of WPI Lib, the fact that there are potential expansion kits coming. I think it's really the future right here and it's also building the future too like ah future squared that's sweet i love that so much i've we've gotten a lot of really awesome words of wisdom from both of you you know brad you quoted woody flowers saying that this is more than robots it's more than just the kit it's more than just building a robot and then rob i really creativity is currency that is something that will stick with me forever as we wrap up today's stem talk and interview do you have any final words that you'd like to share? Either of you, Rob, you want to start? Uh, sure. For for me, it's, you know, I would just say keep keep creating, keep inventing, um, be passionate, be joyous. And I think one of the huge things, one of the most important things is never be afraid to fail. Failing is learning. There's a, well there's a movie, there's an animated movie that came out, oh, gosh, probably two decades ago now called Meet the Robinsons about this little kid who wants to be an inventor and he comes up with this thing and he's showing these people who he really respects and wants to impress and it fails catastrophically and he's all sullen and sad and the the people around him go you failed it was great it was glorious because when you fail you learn when you succeed not so much so don't be afraid to fail fail gloriously fail spectacularly oh man i have failed so beautifully in my time (laughs) But that leads to greater successes. So yeah, be passionate, be fun, be joyous, have fun with it, make it fun. Find the fun for yourself. And then if you can, if you want, share that with other people. Well said. Thank you. Brad? Sure. Um, uh, You know, I get this a lot when I'm doing, you know, I'm in school and and, and there's some uh, high school students coming through that are trying to decide, you know, if they want to come to WPI or not. And they ask me for, words of wisdom. I think um, you guys, you guys in the audience, all of you, all of you uh, students, right, who are on the on robotics teams, you're at this stage in your life, which is like an amazing time. You're, you're given the opportunity to get involved in doing this like pretty awesome engineering design for things. You're working on teams, you're doing all this stuff that's like hugely exciting that many of us never had the opportunity to do before. And and you know what? I mean, this you're not going to get this time back again. You know, you, you'll graduate from high school, you'll go to college, you'll go through college, you'll get a job. Once you have a job, nobody's going to ask you if you wanted, you know, if you want to join a robotics team and 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 spend, you know, every day building robots or being creative or doing all these things or learning about all these crazy things that have nothing to do with what you're working on, and and really being able to expand your your you know your vision, your horizons and stuff. So you should really, really take advantage of the of this time right now, because it's not coming back again, and and make the most of it, and uh, and and really try to like Rob says, you know, really push your creative boundaries, really try and come up with really really cool designs, really, really just do the most you can with this time, um, because some of these things only happen once in your life, and you got to really take advantage of it when it comes around. And it's so easy to just to 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 not embrace it, you know, to not really feel that way about it. So that's my advice. My advice is that you're you're living in a time right now that you're not going to get again. T- exploit it, 
you know, really take advantage of this opportunity. I think it's so easy to look ahead and be like, oh, I can't wait for this next moment. I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to like, I know I did it. Can't wait to be an adult. And you know what? You're so great because there are going to be different points in your life where you're just going to learn so much. And I feel like right now is such a critical point. Like I know it shaped me to who I am today, being a part of a FIRST program. So really, I echo what Robin and Brad said, really embrace it. Fail gloriously. I wish somebody told me that when I was like 16 and just like, I can't figure any of this out. It's just like, but you are. It doesn't feel like it, but you are. And I think that's amazing. Um, Final word about the kit. Where can people find the kit if they've been inspired to try and fail gloriously and learn a lot of awesome things with this? Um, we have the kit on our website, sparkfun.com, probably forward slash XRP. But if you just go there, you'll find it, sparkfun.com. And it's all over the place. If you are an educator or a team leader or something like that, get in touch with us. Uh, we do offer a discount. If you're, you know, if you're a hobbyist, you're still paying a pretty cheap, inexpensive price. But if you are, if you are a team leader, if you're buying multiples for, for kids, please let us know. We want to help you get these into the hands of kids. Amazing. Thank you all for joining us. I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much. Thanks.